Next of Kin is about uh, the importance of the family in Chicano cultural politics, that is, um, different forms of cultural expression uh, since the 1960s, and looking at the way that the family has been wedded to patriarchal um, heteronormative value systems, but also the way that it's been reconfigured by queer um, cultural workers, um, writers, and theorists. So think, thinking about the family in its traditional manifestations, but also taking account of the way that it's been reconceptualized um, since the 1960s. So both looking back and looking forward, would you say? Exactly. It's, it's, it's grounded historically, but it also um, gestures um, towards the future, right? What, what the family um, has to offer and how changes in the family uh, are reflective of, of the way that we're starting to reassess the significance of, of kinship, but in ways that are different from its uh, original manifestations in, say, the 1960s and 70s as it was produced during the Chicano movement. Uh, and the reason why I focus on the family is because um, there was always this uh, contest for the, the, the different meanings of, of family uh, that take place within Chicano and Chicano communities. Uh, and so while the family in its more traditional sense has reproduced a normative nuclear kinship network, there are different ways to think about the family. And so using um, feminist and queer theory, I'm looking at the way that Chicana Chicano um, queer communities have also turned to the family in a way to challenge the nuclear patriarchal uh, understandings of the family to give it a more democratic, uh, egalitarian view. Can you give us an example okay. of something that you used to look at and how it was representing the family, both maybe a, a, the traditional stance of a family and then these changes and differences of what makes up a family? Um, in, so in, in the first chapter of the book, I'm looking at um, both visual representations of the family in Chicano movement era uh, newspapers um, and journals. But it's also, um, it's called uh, Reappraising the Archive, um, but it also looks at um, a literary um, text that emerged from that period and identifying uh, the intimately linked uh, notions of family and machismo. And so how I end the chapter, the, each chapter seems to end with a queer twist, right? It starts off with, um, the traditional understanding of the family, but it ends by turning that traditional notion of the family on its head. Uh, so the first chapter ends by talking about the way that the term macho or machismo has been reconfigured by Chicana lesbian writers, reclaiming the term not only uh, as a way to critique uh, patriarchy, but as a way to rethink the idea of the family and the way that the family is intimately uh, connected to uh, questions of, of gender and sexuality. I, I think okay. there's a way that Chicano identity politics um, has been connected to uh, a very uh, patriarchal value system. Um, not in all cases, but if you're going to ground it um, historically um, and say tracking its development since the 60s with the rise of various uh, social movements the politics of identity are really important um, and inextricably linked to questions of gender and sexuality. Uh, and so to, to, to rethink questions of identity means to rethink questions of gender and sexuality. Oh, what I'm trying to do is show that they're intimately linked, that you can't just talk about Chicano without talking about gender. Although the book is grounded historically, I think it's also important um, in a contemporary frame because uh, asking what counts as family ties into current debates about uh, what counts as marriage. and the whole debate around gay marriage, um, although not addressed in the book, 
uh, it's certainly related to that. Um, I think the book is timely in that it's addressing issues that are relevant uh, today, uh, particularly about uh, family values and uh, kinship politics. And I don't think that anyone could really adhere to a normative family ideal or something called a uh, family values model, which reproduces a uh, nuclear patriarchal family. Uh, just because I think on the ground um, we live our lives in such complex ways and it manifests in the way that we uh, create our family networks, right? And so I think the book is, is trying to get at what those alternative family networks are by foregrounding uh, queer communities, uh, queer individuals who help re reconfigure the way that we understand family but not at the expense of including people who are, say, part of our um, our traditional family structure. So at the end of the book, I'm thinking about the influence of queer politics on traditional families and the way that the family can be reconceptualized, um, not at the expense of, say, biological relatives, but to think about, or to rethink the family in ways that give it a more democratic possibility where patriarchy, patriarchy isn't the norm of the day. When one thinks about it, uh, Chicano culture, the family is always seen at the heart of Chicano culture. You know, Latinos in particular, in, in general I should say, are seen as the purveyors of family values and I think you know, politicians are always emphasizing that the family is so important to Latinos and I think within a specific Chicano context that's certainly the case given the way that the family is constantly invoked and represented in literature, film, um, other elements or aspects of visual culture. Uh, and so for me, it was both signali signaling the importance of the family, but at the same time critiquing the way that the family had been, re had been reproduced um, in these families, in, 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 in Chicano communities, uh, in ways that weren't democratic or that weren't egalitarian around questions of Gender Even as far back as the 60s, you can see the contestation um, over reifying a, a, a nuclear patriarchal family um, by Chicana feminist writers. Um, and so what I do is, is, with the help of those Chicana feminist writers, challenge the way that the family is consistently reproduced mm -hmm. um, as the norm. And so by undoing those representations, showing that it's not a norm at all, but rather um, a, a politics that served, uh, that, um, that is constantly changing. That is constantly changing. And, uh, it, and it's been really interesting to, um, to hear the responses to the book since it's been uh, published. Um, non-academic folks are, are reading it and telling me that they're, they're getting a lot out of it uh, just by bringing up issues of, of gender and sexuality in relation to the family. Uh, for some, it's, it, it's still very taboo. You know, the, mm. Those are issues that you don't bring up. And because the family is, is, is seen as this institution that you don't mess with, um, by breaking these silences, I think people are really um, excited that the book is is touching on these issues. And, and I see the book in conversation with recent work on, in queer studies, in feminist and gender studies, but also extending um, the work that's been done in Chicano studies, particularly by Chicano feminist writers and scholars, but also emphasizing uh, the situation of of Chicano uh, men, Chicano gay men, Chicano gay male um, writers and artists. Um, and that's, I think, one aspect that I touch on in the book that hasn't really been addressed in, in previous studies and something that distinguishes it from, from previous works on the subject of the family.